All right, y'all, I'm back. I had to take a little hiatus because I was traveling. It was actually basketball related. But anyway, we're back. Let's talk about the playoffs. Uh, so the Knicks-Pacers game, you'll actually see there's uh, like 28 seconds left in this Denver-Minnesota game. I don't think Denver's dumb enough to blow that lead, so I'm getting started with my recording now. But anyway, uh, let's talk Knicks-Pacers. Uh, the Pacers just absolutely mollywhopped these dudes. Absolutely mollywopped them from the first quarter. Wasn't even going to be close at all during this game. Just about everybody was hitting for the Pacers. They looked like the number one offense in the NBA tonight they got out in transition and they were hitting threes that was their thing uh Aaron Neesmith like had actually a really good game despite him not hitting any threes the rest of the team shot 45 percent if it wasn't for Aaron Neesmith they shoot over 50 percent in this game absolutely nuts uh Pascal Siakam looked great offensively especially in the half court right Miles Turner he didn't miss a shot it, like I didn't think that he did miss a shot but I was just going to compliment I was like I just felt like he was in the right place at the right time at all points in this game obviously he was he hit every single shot Andrew Nemhard, very very nice Tyrese Halliburton came out aggressive again he's hitting his shot that's awesome shout out Ben Shepard man this guy keeps impressing me especially on the defensive end really really impressed with him and Obi Toppin and TJ McConnell are absolutely nasty off the bench if you, like who would have thought coming into the postseason like you would have looked at this team and you've been and you would have been like yeah you know TJ McConnell comes off the bench he's a nice effort guy you wouldn't have thought that you'd be relying on him for like 15 plus points every single night it's crazy like what he's been able to do and it's not just like his little mid-range shot like that it, we shouldn't be surprised that he's making it it's not like he hasn't been playing like uh, against guys that are bigger that much bigger than him his whole life but like still it's crazy and then Obi Toppin is finally starting to turn into something you know I wanted the Bulls to take him the year that they had the fourth overall pick instead of Patrick Williams and then for a while there I was like nope I was wrong about that but now I'm starting to be right about it so there we go with that but yeah no shout out Isaiah Jackson he's been giving them some great minutes like defensively off the bench he still does like one dumb thing like every single game but you know is what it is if we can talk about the Knicks man like I just, I kind of don't want to like overanalyze them too much because they just look so tired. They do. And I know that like people are starting to question them and everything. You know, Josh Hart's like, look, there's just, there just are tougher jobs out there, but it is physically draining to play this many NBA minutes, man. It just, it just is. And like, they, they just look tired out there. They look injured. Like let's, we, I feel like every Knicks fan has gone through this in their head, but they don't have Julius Randle. They don't have Mitchell Robinson. They don't have OG Ananobi. They don't have Bojan Bogdanovic. Like, like, they're just missing so, so much. And, like, this group has done so well yet. Yeah, like, I know this game was just atrocious. What did they shoot? They shot 18%. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it felt like it just felt like every shot was just kind of like, a, uh, please go in. Like, we're just so tired. So, hopefully, they get a couple days off or whatever. Come back to New York with a little bit of energy again in the garden. They try to refocus. They try to get back into it. But, man, um, at least Alec Burks was hitting. He was hitting a lot at the beginning. I feel like he missed. He made, like, his first, like, five or six shots. And then he kind of went cold a little bit after that. But started out hot at the very least. So, I'll, I'll be curious to see what Thibs comes up with. Because, you know, he's going to have some sort of adjustment for things. But, no, yeah, the Pacers just, like, look like they're healthy. And they've been running and running and running all season long. And that's one thing, right? But the Knicks look like they're falling behind and here's something to think about like the Knicks have been tired right they've been tired and this is something that you just learn through coaching and playing and stuff like in the places that I've been when when guys uh have to do this much on the court when they're winning the adrenaline keeps going right you don't feel as tired you just don't but as soon as you lose all of a sudden all that weight comes back to you like when we won some of our our tournaments to go to like March Madness and stuff like I just felt like every single injury went away every single little nitpicky thing you've had throughout the whole year is gone and then like as soon as you lose and you go and sit down and you relax you realize oh my god everything hurts all the time what's going on and that's what I feel like is happening with New York a little bit so we'll see we'll see how they respond this series is far from over I'm sure the Knicks are still favored but there's a lot to go still uh looks like Minnesota and Denver's done let's ju let's just go talk right about this one so let's just talk about uh the fact that Aaron Gordon had just free range again in this game and that's just concerning to me right because he's just he's back to what he was doing in the Lakers series now he's just floating around the dunker spot just waiting for the ball they've been doing a great job of keeping Michael Porter Jr. from shooting but like because of that Aaron Gordon's just free roaming the paint because they're going to the Jamal Murray Jokic pick and roll right and then so they have to hard hedge it like in that little mid-range area or whatever and then because of that Aaron Gordon uh he's either being tagged by Mike Conley which isn't a great person to have tagged but that's what the Nuggets are doing right they're like okay Conley's gonna have to tag him then because they're just gonna pick whatever 
driver's side and uh, go to that way. But, you know, even then, if he doesn't slide over quick enough, then it's a dump off. And then, you know, uh, KCP or uh, Christian Brown in this case, or Justin Holiday even in this game, are the ones hitting the three then if you help over too much. Like, it's it's pretty simple. They're doing kind of just the same thing over and over again. But holy cow, we, we got to do something. Because if Aaron Gordon's just going to go 11 for 12 every single game, then yeah, they're going to win. Obviously, Jokic was phenomenal as always. Uh, was just out there doing his thing. Jamal Murray thought had a very nice game. Uh, but the bench, bench showed up for Denver this time. You got two. Two out of four from Reggie Jackson. Uh, Justin Holiday's hitting. Christian Brown is hitting. That's awesome. Can we say the same thing for the Timberwolves? No, nobody helped out Anthony Edwards like at all tonight. I thought Mike Conley was playing very hard. It just wasn't effective, right? Obviously, Nas Reed had a pretty solid game overall. Just uh, it just wasn't enough, right? Because no one else on the team was there. Uh, we can point at like Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. Rudy Gobert is absolutely useless on offense right now. In the previous series, he was at least being like a good distributor and like he had solid hands and everything. I feel like he's so clunky right now. Again, he looks so uncoordinated again. Like he's got little guys on him and he can't just get the ball up and over and just take your time, go up, over. You're so much bigger than everybody else. But they're just like rushing. They're rushing. Uh, McDaniels needs to be more aggressive. That's just kind of a complaint throughout the whole season with McDaniels after he got that big ass contract. Just going to have to do more. He's going to have to do more. He needs to attack off the dribble because they don't have a great matchup for him. So here's the thing, like uh, Michael Porter Jr. like has no lateral quickness. And here's OK, here's here's two things, actually. Michael Porter Jr. has no lateral quickness and Nikola Jokic doesn't block shots like uh, I've seen players be scared of big players before, like in college and stuff, but they're not like vertical threats. And I have to remind people all the time, like, look, just because they're big doesn't mean anything. Like they're not jumping over anything more than the credit card anyway. Like, and they he, they don't want to most of the time. Like Jokic isn't out there to block shots. He's there to just put his body there. Like you have to go up and contest these guys and you have to attack guys like Michael Porter Jr. Because it doesn't, like they're not going to do anything. I promise you they won't. That's just not what their game is. They don't want to foul because they're trying to get back on offense. But yeah, no, so these three got to be better. Ant was phenomenal. Like Ant, ain't your fault, dog. It just ain't your fault. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker has gone ice cold, which is scary. Um, we need him to be a better shooter. Again, like you just, and you look down the bench, it's not like anyone else is getting in. Like Monte Morris wasn't doing anything for us. And that's why um, at the trade deadline, I was afraid like something like this would happen. I thought Monte Morris was a solid pickup and I'm still waiting for him to be better than what he is but I was like man if they could go find a way to get a Jordan Clarkson or like a Kobe White or something like that and I'm not saying those names were necessarily available Jordan Clarkson's always available but I'm like I feel like we just we need another bucket getter because Carl Anthony Towns has been so inconsistent and we like after Edwards what happens because it hasn't been McDaniels and Gobert's never that guy and Conley's old and we hadn't discovered Nikhil Alexander Walker could shoot or really do anything yet so I just I feel like maybe a missed opportunity there at the deadline but but I don't know, like there, there's just a lack of pressure as well. Like maybe the Timberwolves are tired too. It's hard to say, but I feel like that dog in them kind of left. And maybe that's what happened after they kind of got punched in game three. They realized how tired they were. And I, I don't know, but they, they've got to be better. They, they just need to be. This doesn't look like the defensive team they were. And that's partially credit to the Nuggets, man. Like the, the Jokic Murray pick and roll thing is just hard to stop. But here's the thing. There's one and a half guys that can really dribble on this team. If you pressure them with the basketball everyone else you just got to get up and just be dogs with them man because like mpj's not putting the ball in the court like yes i know Jokic can like handle but he can't like like stop ball pressure or whatever it's gonna slow him down at the very least aaron gordon doesn't want to deal with it kcp don't want to deal with it justin holiday i don't think's dribbled a basketball in four seasons and christian brown don't want to do it like he's okay but like, you get up into him it's gonna be just fine so that's kind of what i'm seeing out of this one um i'm looking forward to the games tomorrow y'all but Hey, these were these were some interesting ones tonight. These were telling. We got a couple of real close series now. It's going to be a fun playoffs. But hey, until then, we'll see you guys next time.